Previously on the Cristo Ray Podcast. No! It's you. It can't be. Is that a real lightsaber? We meet hey. again at last. Oh, keep away from me. The circle is now complete. The circle? When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> oh, sorry there, I had a frog in my throat. Now, where was I? Oh yes, now I am the master. The master of social studies. Only a master of evil social studies, Mr. Dybul. Oh, oh. You, you can't win, Dybul. If you strike me down, I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Oh wait, that's not true, that's crazy. I'd just be dead. I've gotta get out of here. There's no escape. Uh, unless uh, I jump through this window. Coward! Run for now, but I will find you. He tasks me. He tasks me and I shall have him. I'll chase him around the topiary park and around the half-sized gym and around perdition's flames before I give him up. Several months later. Hey guys, it's time to start the Krista Ray Columbus podcast Christmas special. But I can't find Mr. Corgan anywhere. Sing the theme song. Where is he? Haven't you heard? Mr. Diable's in town. Rumor is he's searching for Mr. Corrigan. He's vowed to finish him off by Christmas. So now he's in hiding somewhere. That's terrible. And they used to be such good friends. What happened? Well, we have our own problems. How can we start the podcast without the theme song? Christmas is canceled. Wait, wait. I happen to have some of this magic Christmas dust straight from Stanley's workshop. That's not weird at all. It's not weird. You just don't understand. Watch. Let's see what would happen if I sprinkled some over the crystal ray choir. Start the show. We are your hosts, Brianna, Nehemiah, Rebecca, Jaleel, and Helen. And this is the Christa Ray Columbus Podcast Christmas Special. No, no, make it stop. Make it stop. Hey, speaking of great music, how about that Christa Ray Choir? They're great, aren't they? Well, that depends. Which cohort do you mean? 1112A, 1112B, 1215A, 1215B. No, no, make it stop, make it stop. Let's just agree they're all great, especially 1112B. Mm. Well, they wouldn't be what they are without our amazing musical director, Miss Caps. Come on out, Miss Caps. Hello, everyone. Miss Caps, this is a Christa Ray podcast Christmas special, and it wouldn't be Christmas without Christmas music. Could you have the choir sing one for us? Sure. What would you like to hear? Angels, we have a Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Angels, we have heard. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Angels, we have heard. Oh, hi. Angels, we have heard. Oh, hi. Angels, we have heard. Hold on. Hold on. We can't sing all of those at once. That would be impossible. Listen, nothing is impossible with some more of this magic Christmas dust. Let me go ahead. No, wait. I don't think you want to do that.
no. It worked. Let's give it up for the Chris Array Choir. Thanks, Miss Capch. You're welcome. Bye now. Merry Christmas and good luck with the rest of the show. Thanks. Merry Christmas. See you soon. She's so nice and the choir sounded amazing. Yes, especially cohort 1215A. Wait, <laughs> aren't you guys who killed the fish? Okay, well, you see what had happened. We didn't kill it. 1215B killed it. Exactly. Wait, I'm so lost. What happened? Someone wasn't feeding our, it. Our fish, Harry, died. Harry, it's Benji. It was Harry. Oh, it was <laughs> David Nolan. Come on, guys. Let's not fight. It's Christmas. Yeah, be nice now. If you like the choir, did you know that the Christa Ray also has a guitar class? I'm in the class, and Miss Capsch has taught us a lot. Would you like to hear me and the rest of the class play something? Of course you do. Here's Jingle Bells. <laughs> was amazing thank you thank you thank you there's a lot of musical talent at Christa Ray. did you know jamie howell plays the piano here she is playing great wintery song snowy river Way to go, Jamie. Now, here's one of my favorite Christmas classics, Carol of the Bells. Wait, this isn't Carol of the Bells. What is this? Wait, look, it's Mr. Dival. <laughs> I am no longer Mr. Dibble. I am more history than man now. From now on, I shall be known as Darth Dibble. Oh no, he's succumbed to the dark side. Where is Mr. Corrigan? I've been searching for him everywhere. He's harder to find than a first edition of Notes on the Constitutional Convention in the E section of the University Library. Please, Mr. Dibble, give up your evil ways. It's Christmas. Christmas? Words of James Madison, bah humbug! I don't think James Madison said that. James Madison said everything! Now, I must continue my search. He did not have to jump out the window. There's a perfectly good door here. Well, that was awkward. Ruby, how about a little more guitar music to change that mood? Sure, how about Old to Joy? <laughs>
that was great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, guys, listening to all of this Christmas music got me feeling like how I was in the old times. It has me remembering all the songs we used to listen to. I remember getting up in the morning and hearing all of these songs on the radio and going into the dining room and seeing all the African cultured foods. I went into the living room and there was all of these presents around the tree, but I didn't get to do that until I was like, you know, 15. But how is it for you guys? I think that most excitingly, I'm, um, I remember back when I was younger, we had gotten like some bikes. So my mom some bikes when we ended for Christmas and we're seeing the rolling. And it's just an awesome time of the year. Oh my goodness. I feel like I can relate. And I don't know if about you guys, if you remember, I feel like a lot of the students know what I'm about to talk about. Remember the silly bands? Like, I would always ask for those and like, please give me some silly bands. And, you know, I was happy. I was a happy camper. I remember looking forward to that. And I feel like for me, like the thing that I look forward to the most was like the food. You know, I didn't even care about the presents. I knew when Christmas came around, we we're going to eat some good food. Like in my culture, we would eat a lot of tamales. How about you guys? Well, I kind of um like can relate to getting gifts when I was little because we didn't really do gifts. We just knew the real meaning of Christmas, like um like the birth of Jesus. But I'm from Africa, and like where I'm from in my village, we didn't do presents. So coming here four years ago, I like got to experience both the fun sides of Christmas, which is like acknowledging the present jesus as the present and also receiving actual gifts and i don't know maybe like getting money from my family i mean who doesn't love money so that's my favorite gift so far mine is also the same situation i also grew up somewhere where for christmas we don't have the gift situation we have like um we actually learned to meet the true meaning of christmas um like the only thing we would get that was like christmas like is like before Christmas, we all like wear um, new clothes for Christmas. That was like part of like after learning what Christmas meant, like wearing the new clothes, like bring Christmas spirit. And then also when I came here four years ago, also like I learned more about the Christmas um, a spirit and then like started the tradition of like gifts and um, I still wanted clothes, that's it. <laughs> it's not, I didn't, it didn't change, like clothes, new clothes for Christmas, just bring the Christmas spirit for me. Wow, I totally agree with everything you guys have been saying. I know personally for me, like Helen, Christmas was more about like going to church, uh, talking about the birth of Jesus and how it's such a great thing that we can all be together. We didn't get presents too, just like her, until we were like 13. And I remember like my first present that I ever got was a nail set from my dad. And my dad didn't know too much about, you know, so he got me the kids one and it was the type that peels off. So there was really no point in getting it, but you know, it was cute because it was the first thing I got. And it kind of just makes me wonder what other people got too. Like around this time, different people go through different things. And as you get older, the gifts change. I know it, we had some suggestions about uh, who was getting presents, and I could see that a couple of teachers here actually got some as well, and they kind of describe it. Would any of you feel free to, like, tell us about these teachers' gifts? I remember, like, we were seeing, like, the form that the teachers did, and I remember reading someone got, like, roller skates, and I was like, dang, I felt that because I'm a skater, and I used to be, like, at the skating ring, like, every weekend. One of the gifts that I saw on the Google Doc was Mr. Kohler. It was a stamp collecting kit, but they basically said, this is what they, from in their own words, what they said. I don't have the original album, but I am still an avid stamp collector today, 49 years later. I read it too, and it, I think they said that he still does do it till this day. I think that's awesome as well. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Miss Alima said something similar. She said that when she was eight, she had a My Baby Alive doll, and you could feed and change her diapers. Okay, Miss Salinas, wow, your parents really went all out. You know, all this great Christmas music and the lights, the presents, you know, these things are all great, but we never want to lose sight of the true meaning of Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. We have a God who loves us so much, he became one of us. And that's what Christmas is all about. In the time of COVID, it sometimes seems like our whole world is upside down. Maybe that's why it's more important than ever to keep some traditions alive. 
to retell the story of Christmas, the same story that has been passed down for 2,000 years. Here is that story from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to marry him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that there will be great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. And the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. <laughs> They hurried off and found Mary and, and, and Joseph and the baby. Who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all that heard were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. <laughs> The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed our very first Christmas special. From everyone at the Chris Ray Podcast, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. A big thank you to Ms. Caps for conducting the choir and guitar classes. Mr. Corgan is still nowhere to be found. 
but I'm sure the choir can sing us out of in style. And this time, they don't even need magic dust. Okay, choir, take it away. There we have it. We made it all the way to the end of the Cristo Ray podcast Christmas special, and Mr. Dye will never found me. Now I can just sit back in my chair by the fireplace, unlit, of course, you know. Don't want to burn the big guy. <laughs> uh, but I'll just cozy up with this great biography of Chester A. Arthur and let visions of sugar plums dance in my head as I wait for Christmas Day. What's that? Do I hear sleigh bells? Could it be? Oh! Ho, ho! Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, is that you? Oh, I hope he got me the Enterprise update to my Schoology account. I sent three letters. Ho, ho, ho! My, Santa Claus, what cool hair you have. Wait a minute. You're not Santa Claus, it's you! Ha, 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 yes, it is I, Darth Dybul. I finally found you. Prepare to die. Mr. Dybul, no! What's happened to you? It's Christmas. Christmas? Christmas? As James Madison once said. No, we didn't. W what do you know? We used to be friends. We used to be equals. But ever since you went off to get your PhD, you've changed. You act like you think you're, 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 you're Henry Clay, and I'm just, I'm just Daniel Webster. Well, there's no reason to be insulting. No, you need to listen to this. You've changed, and someone needs to tell you. So listen up. You're a mean one, Mr. Dybul. You used to be my friend. But since you went to get your PhD, your arrogance never ends. But Mr. Dybul, you're more overrated than Federalist number 10. Oh, I'm, I'm more overrated than the most foundational document to the system of our American democracy? Okay, cool. I'm happy to be that overrated. You're a mean one. Mr. Dybul, I think your bow tie must be on to tie. You have taken it too far. Because if your head gets any bigger, it will soon blot out the sun. My bow ties Mr. look Dybul, great. Dybul, you're more overrated than... Federalist 51. Okay, okay. Maybe you have a small point. Thank you. That whole checks and balances doesn't seem to be working as smoothly as Madison thought it would. Uh, okay, I, I think you're missing the point. Look, look, maybe there's a way we can, we can let the spirit of Christmas help us to restore our friendship. I don't know. Didn't you hear the Crystal Ray Choir sing all those great Christmas songs? Yes, of course. They were great. Those guitarists can really shred. On that, we can agree. Well, well maybe if we sang some Christmas carols. I, I mean, uh, it, it can't hurt, right? Fine, fine. I'll give it a try. All right. Hark, Hark the, the herald, herald angels, angels sing. sing. Corrigan is a stupid jerk. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, come on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, let's try again. Uh, deck the deck halls the with bells of holly. holly. Fa la 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 Corrigan stinks. Are you serious right now? Uh, Sorry. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. It came, it came upon, upon a midnight clear that Dybul is the worst. Hey, now you're doing it. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. <clears throat> uh, Frosty, Frosty the, the snowman, snowman was a happy, happy jolly, jolly soul. soul. Unlike Corrigan, who has many personality flaws. The jingle bells, Dybul smells, Dybul laid an egg. Really? That's the best you can come yeah, up yeah, with? Yeah, yeah, I can do it too. I can, uh, okay, okay, stop, 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 stop. Obviously, this is not working. Obviously. I mean, would it kill you just to wish me a Merry Christmas? Yes. You wound me, sir. You wound me. Maybe we should just give up. Should I kill you now? Oh, I don't know. I mean, let's not be hasty. If you won't wish me a Merry Christmas, how about Happy New Year? What do you mean? Well, don't you know that song they always sing on New Year's Eve? Odd Lang Syne. Yes, James Madison wrote it. That's the one. What? 
look okay anyway yes i'll i'll unsign i mean it means it means uh time long since or or maybe more loosely days gone by we sing it to remember our old friendships and to remind ourselves to never forget how important they were to us and how important they are oh that one i i, I don't know it oh sure you do i think it goes a little something like should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind should old acquaintance be forgot and old Christmas, Mr. Corrigan. Merry Christmas, Mr. Dybul. And Happy New Year. Jinx! Ow! <laughs> <laughs>